it's me again, back with another tutorial. This is another simple duckbill style face mask, using the same pattern as the previous tutorial. But that one was one layered. This one is lined, so you don't have to overlock or search the edges. A nose bar would help shape around the nose area. Feel free to modify my patterns to adapt to your projects. Make sure you have pre-washed all your fabrics before starting any projects. This is to eliminate any shrinkage in the future. So let's get started. For demonstration purposes, I am using poly cotton for the lining. And for the outer fabric, it is 100% cotton, Japanese print, light cream, cat, dobby fabric. This is woolly nylon elastic, slightly thicker than the usual one. It is soft and doesn't irritate the ears. If you can't get hold of aluminium nose bars, you could always use twist ties, pack cleaners or metal wire from the hardware stores. 12 gauge jewellery wire is also good. Whatever you choose, make sure it doesn't rust if you're planning to wash it. Otherwise make a separate channel for the easy removal of the nose bar. This time I folded it with the wrong size touching because I am not marking the right side with the chalk. And make sure both sides are parallel. Use a ruler to double check the top and the bottom. Now check the patterns are straight by measuring the grain line against an edge. Pin in one point. This allows it to swing a little while you correct the bottom of the grain line. Make sure it is the same measurement. Do this to all your pattern pieces. Lay your fabric out properly. Don't try and fit as many masks on one sheet of fabric. Pattern cutting does not work like that. Everything needs to be cut on grain. This is what a pattern cutter had to do to prepare the fabric for cutting. Here's a little tip. If you place the lining fabric exactly under this one, you can cut both fabrics together. I actually filmed this part a day before going out to buy some fabric for lining. Remember to notch all the patterns. You should have for each pattern piece, two pieces of each fabric. As for the binding, you only need two pieces of the main fabric. A little tip here is to cut it slightly longer than you need to. It's a little reassurance. To make the bias binding, prepare your fabric first. Use a set square to make sure your fabric is squared in all four corners. Here I am using a pattern master. If you don't have a set square, you could always use a piece of paper that hasn't been cut. We need to establish the 45 degrees angle. The set square can help. But otherwise, use the paper. Fold the paper like this. Put the shortest straight edge against the fabric. The angle is true 45 degrees. A rotary cutter is great for cutting straight edges, otherwise scissors are fine, but you need to mark a line before cutting. Crease the line to be cut. Use a ruler to guide. Make the binding 4cm wide. Mark 4cm at one point, then 4cm at a second point. Now just join. Repeat until you have enough length you need to bind the pattern. If you are not sure how long you need the bias binding to be, just measure the main pattern piece. That's pattern piece number one. Measure the edges at the top and the bottom, then double the measurement. Add four centimeters for look. If your ruler isn't long enough to reach, fold the fabric over. How to join the bias binding. Put two pieces together to see if it's compatible. This isn't, this is. Place the right sides touching each other. The diagonal edge has to be aligned. Now you can slide this edge up and down, but you must keep it aligned. Now you have to sew between the two intersections, there and there. From now on, I won't be reminding you to backstitch from the beginning and the end of your sewing. This should be second nature if you've been watching my tutorials. 
snip the corners. Open the seam and press with your nails to help it lie flat. This piece has a tip missing. Snip off equal amounts using the edge as a guide. Place the right sides touching each other. The diagonal edge has to be aligned. Now you have to sew between the two intersections. Repeat until all binding is attached. Now we are going to sew all the curved edges. Right side touching right side. Chaining like this helps save sewing thread. At every curved edge, snip like this. Careful not to overcut too close to the seam. Open the seams and run your nail along it to help it lie flat. Press all the seams with an iron. If you like, you can iron the binding strips. I did not do this in my last tutorial. If you want to make it wider, you could always cut another piece. Otherwise, just iron the seam allowance a little narrower. Check your notches. To help place the fabric pieces together. With the wrong size touching, match the outer fabric with the lining fabric. Now match the seams. This is important. Pin in place. As for the other two pattern pieces, the pinning is different. For the nose pattern pieces, using the notches, Match up the pattern pieces, this time with the right size touching. Match the seams and pin. This is the sewing edge. Sew one centimeter seam allowance. Now for the chin piece. Using the notches, match up the pattern pieces. Right size touching. Match the seams and pin. This is the sewing edge. Sew the edge. Sew one centimeter seam allowance. Open the fabrics. 
you are going to sew an edge stitch on the lining side. Catching the seam allowance under about 1 to 2 millimeters from the seam is good. Pulling the fabrics apart as you sew helps. Repeat on the other piece. Give this a press if you can. I am going to run my fingers over these to make it lie flat. This prevents the lining from rolling over to the right side. Assemble your fabric pieces. Check for the notches to help match up. Pin the pieces together. Make sure the top overlaps the bottom. Make sure the top overlaps the bottom. Base the fabrics together at the edges. Let me just remove the pin on the back. About 3mm from the edge. Repeat on the other edge. Give the edges a trim, ready for bias binding. Put a pin here to remind you this side is a nose piece, if it helps, but you should be able to tell by the overlapping. Turn to the right side. Place the right side of the bias binding, touching the right side of the mask. Align the edges. Leave a centimetre overhang. Sew so one centimetre seam allowance. On the wrong side, pull the binding out. Fold it over so the edges meet, then fold again. Make sure the stitches underneath are covered. Pin to hold in place. You can put the nose bar in now or later. Sew on the binding about 1 to 2 millimeters away from the edge. Cut off excess binding. Repeat on the other edge.
remember the nose bar is optional. Insert the nose bar now if you haven't already. Secure both ends with a few stitches. Cut off excess binding. Open the binding and place the right side touching the right side of the mask. Align the edges. Leave about 1cm hanging off at both ends. This can be trimmed down later if it's too long. Sew in the groove. Repeat on the other side. Trim off excess. You only need one centimeter. Fold down the end to make a crease. Open up and cut away the triangles in the corner. This will get rid of bulk when it's folded. Repeat on the other sides. Open up the seam, fold down, over and over again. Repeat on the other sides. Open up the seam, fold down, over and over again. I find this method helps when threading the elastic, if you thread through the correct layer. Repeat on the other edge. Turn to the right side and edge stitch on the binding. 1-2mm to two millimeters away from the seam is fine. Repeat on the other edge. I have two thicknesses of woolly nylon here. I was intending to use the thicker one but changed my mind to using the thinner because it looks better on the smaller size mask. Seal it with a flame to stop it from fraying. You can use a hair grip or a bobby pin to thread your elastic or even a bodkin or a crochet hook. I prefer using my ruler loop turner. It makes it so easy. So there you have it. Pop in the filter and you are good to go. Here's an option to consider if you're using thick or wide elastic. The overhead and neck straps to help take the strain off the ears. To be honest, if it's elastic straps and not tying ones, then it is best to wear both elastics on the head, crossing at the sides. What I mean is the bottom elastic sits over the top elastic.
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe or follow for more from me at Shani Makes. Here's a gift for you. You can download this envelope to keep your patterns organised. Just go to my website. See you next time.